Okay, short and sweet, new, t new science, temperatures, chilling RNA discovery reshapes the rules of life. Well, what are they talking about? RNA, here, this recent study has identified new biochemistry for RNA functions at low temperatures. All right, it's the folding of the RNAs. Now, RNA is the precursor, basically, to DNA. It's the, it's the middle ground. It's the half of a DNA. Whoops. All right, that's a single strand. The double helix wraps around like this. Let me show you what the Russians found in space in the cryogenic temperatures. They're talking about new biochemistry for RNA at low temperatures. RNA is formed by linking molecules of ribose, a monosaccharide with phosphate groups. Phosphate's the key. Phosphorus is in, in all the living things. It binds to four types of nitrogenous bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Uracil is the key to RNA. Now, both the sequence of base and the three-dimensional structure of RNA are determined fact, determining factors in the great versatility of the functions that characterize the molecule. And these are extremely elegant molecules, DNA, basically. The team used the mechanical unfolding of the RNA to understand precisely the diverse forms that RNA takes when it folds in on itself. It's, uh, it's staggering the amount of connections and interplay. It's just unbelievable. And it's all magnetic. It's all magnetic. Now, um, then this Felix Reitort, head of the small biosystems lab, um, looking at the condensed matter physics, says that the folded structure of biological molecules, DNA to RNA to proteins, determines their biological action. Without structure, there is no function, and without function, there is no life. So if these things are all just floating around, doing nothing, just doing, laying around, nothing's going to happen. But if they all of a sudden start doing this and twisting together and making... DNA, all of a sudden you got life. And that's what life is, is, is RNA changing DNA. All right, now let me show you what the Russians found in 2015. All right, this is in space in the Russians' space station. And they injected into a vacuum chamber these charged particles. And instead of making these little lattices they expected, it made this black hole, which is, is my theory, is all the dark matter goes to the center. The charged particles glue into them. That's what's going on here. And the reason it's a little flat is because it's still being attracted by gravity a little bit. Way out in space where there is no influence by Earth's gravity or any other gravitational force, it would be a perfect round black hole. They're everywhere. They're all over the place. And they're just find, figuring it out now and they don't realize it's the only way they can understand that is dipole electron flood theory. You see this? It's the only reason they're seeing it is they're finally starting to look for it. Entire swarm of black holes detected moving through the Milky Way. They're everywhere. They're just everywhere. This is a fluffy cost. This is an artist rendition, but it's basically not too far off. A fluffy cluster of stars spilling across the sky may have a secret hit secret hidden in its heart, a swarm of over a hundred stellar mass black holes. Well, they're everywhere. They don't know where these things are. That's an artist's rendition. This, my friends, is not an artist's rendition. This is actual reality. Now, light has, you know, when, when particles are spewed off the sun and stars, they don't necessarily come out as full particles. They can come out as just the white parts. They can come out as just the black parts. They'll find each other sooner or later. But when they are spewed from these extremely energetic um, sources, the, the white ones are going to go, black ones are going to go, everything's going to be split apart. We know we can split them. That's not a problem whatsoever. So eventually they're going to collapse into each other just like they did in the Russians. Now, here's the real key. Here's the real big key. 
is in cryogenic temperatures. This is what they found. The Russians found that those little particles started to turn into DNA strands. It looks like something similar to DNA strands to me. DNA is a double helix. That means it wraps around and around and around and around. And in between, they have these bars. And these are the formation. So when they come together, they have to match. And if they match, they click. If they don't match, they just don't match. You don't get a, you don't get a DNA strand. And um, the cryogenic part it makes some sense because it, that, that means there's no extra electrons. There's no extra electrons to interfere with the bonding process. When you have a lot of heat and so forth, that makes things push apart and, and, and change. You know, you melt stuff, they just change to other substances. However, if you took all the heat away, they're going to lock in together the way they should. And, and cryogenic temperatures are in outer space. It's like almost absolute zero. And that's what they found. Cryogenic temperatures appears to create life. All right, I'm just going to leave it at this because they're just starting to understand the temperature changes that occur within RNA and DNA. And space is a complete change in temperature. And then there's going to be other areas of temperature that are going to be totally different throughout the universe. But they're saying the study reveals RNA sequences create hairpin structures, begin to adopt new compact structures around below 20 degrees centigrade. Now, so they're up in really high temperatures, actually. I'm talking about cryogenic stuff way down, hundreds of degrees below zero. Now, all the RNA molecule studies share unexpected novel structures at low temperatures. Again, not that low. We identified a range of temperatures between plus 20 centigrade and minus 50. Below plus 20, ribose water interactions, ribose means ribosome to me, water interactions start to become important. And a maximum of RNA stability is reached at plus 5. So ribose is the enzymes. And your enzymes won't work at certain temperatures. So a maximum of RNA stability is reached at plus 5 centigrade where the density of water is maximal. Below 5 degrees centigrade, a new RNA stability is determined by, again, ribosomes in the water, interactions until minus 50. Now, that's when the RNA unfolds again. So the RNA is all folded up and it starts to unfold, leading to the phenomena of cold denaturation. Denaturation means just to, to make it not uh, work anymore. Denatured means not in its natural state. It doesn't work anymore. Now, what happens? It comes back together somehow. And um, again, I think I showed you where the Russians showed it swirling around, looking like it was coming back into, uh, into something that looked like DNA. That's all I can tell you. I don't know. I, have, I don't have the answers. But that damn sure looks like something to me that's uh, looking like DNA. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like to you. And here's the other thing they had, which just looks like a black hole to me. Again, I don't know what it looks like to you. But this is 10 years ago. So it's time to revisit some of these things that were sloughed off. I mean, just totally thrown in the trash. Ah, forget that. It just means nothing. And, you know, even like John Glenn's fireflies. Explain that to me. John Glenn's fireflies. I, I know exactly what's going on. He went up in the orbit of the Earth, and when he st went into orbit, he says, holy smokes, the, the capsule is surrounded by millions of little glowing particles. They look like fireflies. They're winking in and out of, out of um, brightness like crazy, like flickering in on it. And they were swarming by his, his capsule, and he's, he's freaking out. And they just dropped it and forgot the whole thing. I know exactly what caused that. So, I'll explain it in my next video, John Glenn's Fireflies Explained. All right, so, life is a lot different than we thought. Space is a lot different than we thought. You know, the Earth, you look at the Earth from space, it's, a, it's just a round globe of all kinds of stuff. Where did it all come from? Nobody knows. Nobody can explain that. I don't care who they are. 
All right, it, the existence of everything is a big bang. That's just ridiculous. Everything b banged out of nothing. Well, where did a nothing come from? And where did a bang come from? Who, who lit the spark? And there's so much wrong with that. It's just unbelievable. And evolution is just crazy. When you think this slime created all these things that we got now and, and life and everything, come on. And where does slime come from? This is what kills me. Science is just lost when it comes to trying to explain things. They just slough it off by, oh, that's nothing more than volcanic magma or whatever. They can explain everything with magma. Magma. <laughs> and everything else is just, you just have no idea. They think space is a vacuum. It's not. It's clearly saturated with everything. And that's, I bring that in as I talk about John Glenn's fireflies. You know, that goes back to 1962. All right, that's like, what, 60 years ago. And he said, nobody can explain it. They can't explain it. Well, Roger can explain it. So that'll be the next video. I love you all. Keep your mind open. Keep your mind open and ask questions. All right, I love you. Bye.